So what are the practical cases where you can actually apply limits? Why were the limits introduced? Why do we need the limits? What are their applications? All the questions have a common answer. And I'm going to give you the answer in the form of a story about a scientist. Now there was this scientist. Now every scientist, one who is doing an experiment, will want some observations and then will reach to some conclusion and a result. And for that, the scientist was using this machine. Okay? And every machine works on the basis of a function, as we know. And this machine too worked on the basis of a function. Let's say the function was y equals f of x. Of course, the scientist, given it, whenever the scientist gave it an input value, the machine gave the scientist an output value. The simple working of a machine. So for his experiment, the scientist gave the machine the input value 2. And the machine gave it some constant A. The scientist gave it a 2.5. And the machine gave another constant B. The scientist gave a 2.6. The machine gave a 2.C. The scientist gave in a 2.9. The machine gave a 2.D as the output. The scientist gave a 2.999. A lot of nines there. And the machine gave the scientist an output value of E. Okay, so far so good. And now, the scientist went on to give the machine an input value of 3. Now comes the interesting part. The machine did not return an output value. So there was no output value for the input value 3. And now, the scientist was worried. In order to complete his experiment, he needed an output value for every input value that he gave. Now, he had a friend who was a mathematician. So he approached his friend and told him that, see, dude, this is the problem. I have output values for all these values from 2 to 3. As soon as I give it a, a 3, it does not return an output value and that makes my experiment incomplete so the mathematician saw the observations of the scientist and then the mathematician himself thought that maybe the machine only works for values for which x is less than 3 so to confirm this he actually gave the machine a 3.1 and interestingly, the machine still gave a constant output value of F. And he went on. He gave a 3.5, it gave a G. And he observed that it was only at 3 that the machine did not return an output value. Okay. Now, the mathematician again observed the outputs, including the new outputs F and G. And he predicted, and he told the scientists that your machine would work, it basically works on a function like so. It looks like this. It's something like x squared minus 9 over x minus 3. That's what he told the scientist. And the scientist was happy. Okay, I have the function. Now you can go home. Mr. Mathematician, he just took the function, he wanted the value on 3, he wrote it, it is this, the function was something like this, x squared minus 9, so he factorized x squared minus 9, and then he put y equal to x plus 3, and then he said, okay, I want to find out f of x, that is f of 3, so I'll put 
x equal to 3 in y and I'll get a 3 plus 3 that is a 6 he took the value he was happy something like this lot of air there and he completed the experiment and now the mathematician he was like is there actually anything wrong in this working he concluded that the scientists are actually weak in mathematics he was like dude you get a x minus 3 here and you have a x minus 3 here you're actually cancelling out the x minus 3's and so you will have a condition here that x cannot be equal to 3 since x minus 3 cannot be equal to 0 since we've cancelled the factor out that's the condition we have in mathematics and then you're saying that x cannot be equal to 3 and the very next step you're actually putting in x equal to 3 and getting a 6 as the answer have you ever noticed that we have done it so many times in mathematics similar to this we always do this we have a 10x and we have to divide it by sin x we write it a sec x and then we say what is at what is this function y at x equal to 0 what is y of 0 and we say it is a 1 but actually this function is not even defined at 1 when you're cancelling this out, this is basically sine x over cos x and a sine x. When you're cancelling this out, you're always saying that x cannot be equal to 0. And th in the very next step, you're saying that y of 0 is 1. So that is where the limits come in. And that is why we need limits. Let's see why. We have this function, x squared minus 9, the same function scientists function so if we actually apply limit here then we can actually rewrite this as this because this now is the approaching value that is y approaches this value when x approaches a 3 so when x tends to 3 or it approaches 3, y tends to 6. It's not that y, when x equal to 3, exactly, then y equal to 6. That's wrong. So that is where limits are used. Okay. Similarly, in case of tan x over sin x, the limiting value here, x tending to 0, the limiting value, you can write it as 1. But it's not the exact value. So limits give us the approaching values. When I take this down on a function, on a curve, I get something like this. There goes the curve. Okay. And there's a value here where it is actually not defined. It goes on like that. So what is the limiting value? Let's have this point. Let's say is y1. And this point is y2. So it's when it tends from the left hand side and from the right hand side it tends almost to the same value which is y1 and y2 they correspond almost to the same value however if we have something like this and then it goes on there this is y1 this is a y2 and this is again a, a then when you approach from the left and from the right they are totally different values here you have y1 approximately equal to y2 so here a limit exists and here it doesn't the function may be funnier than that it may be something like this the value here it goes on like that even then see you have a, a here this is y1 this is y2 y1 is L not equal to y2 and this is the value of the function it is the actual value of the function which is let's say y3 and since from the left and the right you have different values the limit does not exist so 
that is the basic concept of limits and where we actually use it.